So if you're having a tough time graphing trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, and tangent, well, you are definitely not alone. This could be very confusing. But in this video, we are going to take our time and graph this equation right here. We have y is equal to 3 sine 2x plus 2. So this is going to be a pretty comprehensive lesson on how to graph sine and cosine functions. Now, this video is really designed for those students at this level. So we're talking about uh, students in pre-calculus or taking a full trigonometry course. And one of the things that you need to do is take excellent notes. There's a lot of details here. And uh, if you didn't take good notes in your class with your teacher, no big deal. You could take good notes in this lesson as it's going to be very comprehensive. All right, so if you want to go ahead and try this problem, maybe just pause the video. It'll probably take you about five minutes to graph this thing, but of course, I'm going to fully explain all of this in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help with math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to show you the answer here in just one second, and then I'm going to fully explain in a very detailed manner how to graph sine and cosine functions, but uh, we're just really going to be sticking to sine, uh, a sine example in this particular video, but effectively the process is the same. All right, so you can see right here is the basic sketch. Now, your sketch might look differently. And now this thing goes on and on and on, and I'll talk about uh, why that is in a moment because we are talking about things called periodic functions, right? These are just uh, waves that just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. So uh, sometimes you can be told to um, uh, sketch out two wavelengths or two periods. But anyways, this will give you a basic sense of what the graph is. And um, when you're asked to um, graph, um, a sketch of a trigonometric equation, okay, you want to put in some key things like amplitude, right? So the amplitude for this particular, well, first of all, let's start off with the main axis here. That's That would be the equation y is equal to 2, okay? And then we have an amplitude of 3, okay? That's the wave, that's the height of the wave, all right? So it's going from 3 down to negative 3, but our axis, it's been translating up to, we're going to talk about all this in a second. So our um, uh, amplitude okay, would be def uh, maxed out at 5, and it would be bouncing at negative 1. All right, so you want to show these critical points. And then, of course, right here, we want to um, define uh, the period, which is one wavelength, and that would be pi units. And then you can even put in some more critical points right there. But this is the minimum, I would say, uh, to um, get this problem correct, like on a test. And most of you are, you know, probably interested in watching this video. So you can ace your test quizzes and your final exams, which is awesome. Let's kind of uh, do some uh, quick review of some of this basic stuff. So we're talking about periodic functions, right? So when you when you study sine, cosine, tangent, uh, and then the inverse is the respective, you know, cosecant, secant, all this other kind of good stuff. Now, by the way, if I'm speaking in terms of language and you're com like completely lost, well, uh, you know, you need to, you know, go back, you know, you need to go back to the basics, right? Or maybe you just need to learn the basics for the first time. So Again, this video is designed for those of you that are kind of studying this right now. But let's just review uh, some basic concepts. So periodic functions, right? So the graph has a pattern that repeats indefinitely, right? So like a sine graph or cosine graph, it's just going to go on and on and on forever. So when you're asked to graph these things, you're only going to you know, get you know, one wavelength, one period, or maybe you can ask to do two. Okay, but just understand that the graph goes on indefinitely. That's a periodic function. So let's take a look at the basic sine graph. Y is equal to sine x. So if you don't understand the basic uh, sine graph, well, there's no way you're going to be able to do a problem that's a little bit more complicated like uh, the one that we're dealing with right here. But this stuff is not that difficult. But just a quick review. Sine starts here at the origin, okay? And again, this continues on this way, this continues on this way, and it has an amplitude of, of 1, okay? So in other words, it's going to be going up 
2 positive 1 and down 2 negative 1. So it starts at 0, 0. And at 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, it, it tops out. Okay, so if you were to get your calculator and go, oh, what's the sign of 90 degrees? It would be 1. Okay, so uh, or the sign of zero is zero, and then it, uh, right here just kind of comes back down, and at pi or 180 degrees, it's back down to zero, and then it continues to go down all the way down to negative one at three pi over two, which uh, is going to be 270 degrees, and then it's going to come back and do U-turn up to two pi, which is 360 degrees. So this is one period of pi and the value, I'm, so, I'm sorry, one period of sine and the values of sine along this curve. You need to be able to interpret uh, these graphs to help you with other types of problems. So, you know, that's the that's the key to really master math. You just don't want to blindly do problems like oh, I am going to graph this thing and I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to, <laughs> you can see I'm trying to use my little robot voice here, right? Uh, and, that, and too many students kind of think that way. They're like, oh, here is a problem. I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this to actually get the problem right without thinking about how it relates to the bigger topic, the bigger aspects of mathematics that you're trying to learn, right? So all this stuff is interconnected. And at this level of mathematics, you know, just pretty sophisticated math. You know, you need to be thinking about the graph, inf the information it's telling you, et cetera. So this is the basic sign graph. And what we're going to be doing here is translating it, okay? In other words, we're going to do stuff uh, to this graph uh, so we can move it what? We can move this thing um, from left to right, up and down. We can make the uh, the wavelength um, or the period longer or shorter, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we're doing in this particular problem is we have an equation and it has an impact, all right? So like the amplitude um, is going to be different, et cetera, et cetera. But before you start... Uh, graphing more sophisticated things, make sure you have a good solid foothold on just the basic uh, critical points of um, trigonometric functions, specifically sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? And then, of course, once you master those, then you move on to cotangent, secant, and cosecant. All right, so let's go ahead and take this a step further and review some of these basic concepts, all right? So the amplitude, all right? So the amplitude of the graph is y equals a sine bx, or in terms of cosine, y is equal to a uh, cosine bx, is the amount by which it varies above or below the x-axis, okay? So you'll see here that the amplitude is going to be this um, coefficient a, all right? So this is um, some stuff that you might want to have in your notes if you don't already have your notes available to you. By the way, when you join any one of my um, uh, courses in my Math Help program, I have detailed notes all there. It's super easy for you. Again, uh, for this particular topic, you want to check out pre-calculus. All right, so the period of uh, each graph is the length, okay, of the shortest interval on the x-axis, which the graph uh, repeats. All right, so just some basic review basic concepts. So here, given an equation, a sine bx, or uh, y is equal to a cosine bx, and we'll throw cos cosine in as well because they pretty much work the same way. So if you know how to do sine uh, problems like this particular problem, you can just um, do the same, it's the exact same steps for cosine. Uh, however, cosine has a different uh, base uh, graph, right? It's, it's graph does not look like sine. It's a little bit different. But uh, anyways, let's talk about the amplitude. So the amplitude is the absolute value of A. So whatever this coefficient is, this number in front of sine or cosine right here, if we take the absolute value of it, that is the amplitude. Again, that's how far it goes above and below the x-axis. And then the period is the length okay, of the shortest interval is basically a one wavelength, okay, and that's going to be 2 pi over the absolute value of b, and b is the coefficient of the function. Whatever's inside the function right here, like if we had a 2x, it's that right there. So make sure you understand the location of these variables. Oftentimes, students get confused about this, but anyways, that's the amplitude, and that's the period we're going to have to calculate each of these here for this particular problem. And then also, we're going to have to consider shifts. So shifts are up and down or left to right movements of the graph. So that's going to get more interesting. So we can kind of expand our definition or our formula uh, for amplitude and the period into something more involved like this. So let's uh, take a look at this equation uh, for sine and cosine. They're the same thing. Well, let's just focus in on sine because that's what we're doing. 
So A is going to be the amplitude, okay? So the variables here, how to find the amplitude and the period will be the same, okay? So here's B is the coefficient in front of the X. And then we have a C here as well. We can have a C. This will be an, an example of like, let's say you had Y equals 2 sine uh, 3X minus 1, okay? Or plus negative 1 plus 7. This negative 1 would be C. Okay, now in this particular problem, C is zero, so sometimes you won't have these variables, but if you do, that's where we're C will be uh, located. And then we have this number on the very outside, which we'll call uh, the variable D. So in this example, it would be like a uh, seven, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, using these um, variables, okay, let's talk about the shifts once we have our, an equation with these respective variables. So if D is greater than zero, then we're gonna be shifting the graph D units up. Okay, so for example, in this basic little thing that I made up right here, plus seven, that's greater than zero. So it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna translate that graph. We're gonna move it up seven units. Now, if you're already overwhelmed, I totally get it. You're gonna to have to go super nice and slow with this. You're gonna need your notes. Uh, some graphing paper and just take your time. Don't try to, um, don't go for uh, quantity when you're learning this stuff. Don't be like, oh, I need to do a lot of problems quick. No, no, go for quality. Learn how to do one problem. Learn how to master one problem. Once you get that down, then take on another problem, right? Because there's a lot of things going on. Don't try to do, um, like, oh, I'm gonna do this problem real quick. Oh, I got it wrong, let me try another problem real quick. No, that doesn't work that way. There's just too much information. So uh, just master one problem at a time. Okay, so if D is less than zero, and then we're gonna have a shift of absolute value D uh, units down. And then if we have a C value, in other words, a value like right there, Right, in this particular problem, okay, right here, see if we have a C value. In this uh, particular problem, we don't, but if we did, uh, C over B, if that's greater than zero, then this would uh, uh, be a shift um, to the left, right, which would be C over B units to the left, and then if C over B is less than zero, we're going to shift absolute value C over B units to the right. You can write all this down in your notes, and then, of course, we have the uh, formula for the amplitude and the period, which I already kind of went over. Okay, so there's a lot of things to consider here, right? We need to look, hey, what's the amplitude? What's the periods? What are the shifts left or right, up or down? And then guess what? One thing I didn't even put in here is reflections. So a lot of you are like, reflections, what's that? You might be like, this is just too much. Well, listen, uh, one step at a time, okay? These problems do take time and you have to be patient and focused. All right, so here we go. Here is our problem. So it's y equals three sine two x plus two. So what we wanna do is just match this up to the general equation that I kind of described. So we have y equals a sine bx plus c plus d. All right, so three is going to be our a value, okay? And which represents the amplitude. Our b is two. Now there is no c, this is two x plus nothing, and there's two x plus zero, so there is no c value, so we don't have to worry about that. And then two is our D value, okay? All right, so now we're gonna use all these formulas right here to go ahead and get this respective information. So uh, three is our amplitude. Two, this is our two, so we can get our period, so that's two pi. This is uh, two is our B value, excuse me. So two pi over the absolute value B is two pi over the absolute value of uh, two, which of course is pi, right? So you can just see that work right there. And then we're gonna have a shift of two units up because this is positive. All right, so we have the basic sine value. Its amplitude is gonna be increased to three. Its uh, period is gonna be decreased from two pi to pi. And then we're gonna shift that thing up two. So how do you do this? Well, the stylistically, there's different ways. I'm gonna suggest to you that the first thing you wanna do is put in your new axis, right? So here is the x-axis on a normal sine graph. You're using the x-axis to, um, uh, your amplitude is gonna be kind of going off plus or minus from your x-axis. So there is a shift up two. So now the line, the horizontal line y equals two is your new x-axis, okay? So we do have an amplitude of three now on this particular graph. 
So we're going to be going up 3 and down 3 from the axis, which is y equals 2. This um, uh, is the reflection or the shift up 2 units. Okay, So we haven't had a translation left or right because we don't have a c value, but our wavelength okay, is uh, shorter. It's going to be pi units long, so you can just mark that. There's pi, and then here is 0, and then you can just kind of sketch out uh, from uh, 2, okay, that's going to go up to what? Well, for amplitude is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5. So at 5, it's going to bounce. And then from 2, if we subtract 3, that's going to go down to negative 1. So you can kind of study this graph right here, and you could put in uh, uh, many more points. You could put in these other critical points as well, and maybe your teacher would like you to do that. Uh, so again, these problems can take a considerable amount of time. Definitely use graph paper and pencil. Okay, don't use pen, don't try to freehand this stuff, and take your time. But the main thing here is this. If you don't understand any aspect of um, one problem, you need to get you know uh, your questions clarified. Okay, In other words, do one problem perfectly right, understand completely everything that's going on with one problem, and then you can move on to other problems, okay? And this is sine, sine uh, the graphs of sine and cosine are pretty much the exact same, um, you know, approach. So you, you can see the equations here are um, basically the same. This is just cosine, this is sine. But when you get into tangent, that's a different deal, okay? Then you can get into cosecant, secant, cotangent. There is a lot to learn, okay? So, I mean, just imagine trying to uh, take a course like this without taking any notes. I mean, it would be totally confusing. So when I stress note-taking, I really do mean what I say. All right, but listen, if you are at this level of math, that already means that you are a strong math student, okay? But it gets, you know, difficult for a lot of people. If you need help with this stuff, definitely check out my pre-calculus course. I'll leave a link uh, in the uh, description as well uh, directly to my pre-calculus course. But here's the deal, okay? Uh, um, good news and bad news, right? So the good news is this. You're going to learn much more mathematics beyond this. So you're saying, oh, wow, isn't that exciting? But the bad news is that you're going to be uh, <laughs> dealing with even more challenging things, okay? So math is kind of, you know, continues to go higher and higher and higher and higher. And yeah, it gets more comp complex, but it also gets more interesting and more powerful. So the more you learn, you know, the more you can do, all right? So don't give up. And hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe again. And uh, with that being said, I uh, definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.